For the fourth race of the Target Series, season number 11, we head to the Lone Star State, the Texas Motor Speedway here in Fort Worth, Texas. This is the Nationwide 300. On the pole for today's race, 38 car Adam McDowell, beside him starting in second, the car he drove to two championships in the series, this time driven by Mathis Wells in the 16. Third place, we have Colin Teague. Fourth place, it's Riley Spurley Tube. And rang out the top five, Madison Tall, the 47. In sixth place, Eric Olson, the 25. Seventh place, we have Jake Galloway. Eighth place, it's John Smith. In ninth place, it is points leader Levi Shones. And rang out the top 10, Jake Richardson, driving the 17. Back behind those drivers, Zachary Fitzwater Sr. Outside of him, the 88 of Luke Brainy. Then we have Taylor Bryan Price in the 09 and the 64 of Evan Hunter. Then there's Anthony Nance in the 21 and the 8 of Eli Bright. Then we have Brett Sierra, the 48, and the 77 of Tommy Fletcher Jr., along with the 6 of Landon Dinkins and the 42 of Bronson Minnick. Then we have Mason Baskers, the 19, and the 89 of Roman Fenway. Then there's Justin Zidell and Sebastian Kukulon in the double zero. Jennifer Buford driving the 18, Alex Turner in the 05. Then we have Danny Lloyd and Jose Mills, the 40, in the next row, along with Code Red and Max Anderson, the 23. Then there's Jeff Wright, the 5, and the 14 of Casey Nanico. Jay Jefferson, the Texan, and DJ Reed in the 99. Then we have Alex Fletcher, 41, and 33, Sebastian Dupayne. Michael Gregory in the 60, and the 32, Trey Rainey. Colton Yo, 55, 92, Landon Lyons. And rounding out the field in 41st star in position, Keyshawn Richardson. And in 42nd, Zachary Delello in the 24 car. It's a great time to have a race here at Texas Motor Speedway. I'm joined once again in the booth by Trey Bartow. Trey, we're at, we're at our first mile and a half race of the season. How do you think this is going to go? Um, especially this is a crazy racetrack. It's very tight, and we'll be seeing some free wide action all day long. Uh, you are right there. It's, it is a very tight racetrack, but it is also pretty fast here. Uh, this racetrack is just like most speedways and super speedways we go to. We'll see a lot of two wide action and three wide, but if we do happen to get four wide, you always know that could cause trouble. So that's something we'll definitely have to look out for here today. As you say, four wide here never works, and uh, we normally see it here, especially in the Target Series at the Texas Motor Show. We've seen some big crashes here in the past. With that out of the way, let's go down track time, fire these cars up for racing in the Lone Star State. Drivers, start, start your engines. Forty-two engines come to life here at the Texas Motor Speedway for race number four of the Target Series season. It will be led by Adam McDowell and Mathis Wells to the green flag. So Adam McDowell, a two-time Target Series champion, on the front row on pole position to start this race. And beside him is the car he drove to those two championships, the round Round Racing number 16 of Mathis Wells. It's a 30-lap event here in the Nationwide 300, race number four of the season. Adam McDowell, Mathis Wells, Colin Teague, Riley Sprutub, and Madison Tall, the front five starters for racing here at Texas Speed, 12 over 190 miles an hour in the draft. Pack racing, three wide racing, and maybe some big crashes if they get close together. McDowell into the restart zone, will step on the gas. We're green flag racing at the Texas Motor Speedway. Definitely looks like the first three on the inside row they got a really good jump there as they're able to push the 38 of Adam McDowell out to the lead and he gets up top uh, it looks like he's actually gonna start to block the middle here as they go down into three and four yeah trying to protect both those lines Colin Teague the two trying to follow through to get to second that inside definitely preferred at this racetrack the race off turn number four for the first time at full speed and McDowell to the outside Colin Teague to the inside but McDowell leads the first lap with that run but Teague has the preferred lane off to turn one help for Mazenton here comes Jake Galloway they get the best of starts in that 20 car but use the draft to get back up two and there'll be three wide for the race it off to turn number two for the first time here today yeah it looks like Tallin Colin T got a little tight there into the corner and went up the track a little bit. That allowed Madison Tall and Jake Galloway to get to the bottom there. As you see, third on the inside line is last week's or last race winner, uh, Levi Shones, trying to make it two in a row. And they are now three wide multiple rows deep inside this top ten. Riley Spurrier goes to the middle of Mathis Wells, Conti middle of Adam McDowell. At the front of the field, Jake Galloway slides up. Shones look underneath. Underneath Shones, Fitzwater looks. The 22 will get down and protect that inside off of Fitzwater. Behind them, three wide. Up front, three wide. Levi Shones looking to pick up where he left off at Phoenix. Won the race, got the points. He wants his second straight target series victory. Driving this number 22 car. He's out front at Texas. Fitzwater through to second. But a whole lot of cars coming off turn number four. Uh, they are all very tightly packed together at the moment. Uh, really, it's anyone's race here. It's like most super speedways, you know. As long as you're uh, in the good lane here at the end, you have a very good chance of making up front. As Levi Shones went really high there, followed by Zachary Fitzwater as well. It looks like he went high too. Oh, there they go. 
Around they go on the back stretch. A crash into the inside wall hard for Jay Jefferson up into Evan Hunter. It is the big one at the Texas first wheel. We expect it to happen, and it happens early on. Jefferson going to be done for the day. Danny Lloyd, Evan Hunter. Is that Luke Rainey dry away from the scene? The 88 it was. As we saw, they were four wide off the corner. It led to madness. Adam McDowell, our pole sitter, is caught up in this. Our first caution flag. Some drivers did make it through the scene. Up at the front, these drivers got by. And back in front. Oh, look at this. Alex Turner just spun Taylor Bryan Price to the inside wall. We're going to have to see if something maybe happened there. Maybe the crash started between those two, but Turner must not have been happy with Taylor Bryan Price for some reason. And now the 09 has some damage. So under our first yellow flag here in the Nationwide 300 at Texas, we'll see who led them back to the caution. It was last race winner Levi Shones in the 22 car. These drivers go down the racetrack. Caution out. Lap number five here at Texas. Let's go see what caused it. looked like it was a four-wide mess off turn number two. Four wide off of turn number two. It's not going to end well. Two Roush cars in the middle of a sandwich. And Pulsar and McDowell. Jose Mills down low. And they're going to beat and bang off turn number two. They get together around. They're going to go in front of Luke Rainey. John Smith. Jay Jefferson hasn't missed. But coming down the track, McDowell gets. And there's Luke Rainey and Tommy Fletcher Jr. They take a hard impact in the inside wall. Jefferson comes straight back up the track. Look at cars take to the high side to avoid it. But some not fortunate like Hunter and the 41 of Alex Fletcher. But some hard contact and hit into the inside wall for drivers like Luke Luke Rainey and Jay Jefferson, Tommy Fletcher Jr. Look at this in real speed. Yeah, it all happens right there in front of Luke Rainey. Doesn't have no, has nowhere to go. It gets hooked there by the 77 and just takes a very hard hit down to the inside wall. Not much Luke Rainey could have done. Same for the 77 as Tommy Fletcher got a little bit of damage from Luke Rainey. And I believe the hardest hit out of them all here was Jay Jefferson. He's got blindsided by the, I believe that was the 38 coming back down the track. Yep, goes right to the inside wall. Very hard hit, comes right back up the track and gets clobbered again with a head-on hit there. And if you remember, after we took the caution flag, there are some extracurricular activities. There are three wide bunched up here. And the 09's not really near the 05. I mean, Taylor Ryan Price ahead of him by a few cars. The 09 got back in 8th, the 05 got back in 12th, so it's not like they were near each other on the racetrack. Taylor Bryan Price down from Alex Turner, and Turner just, yeah. He, I. That was just a blatant turn right there. Yeah, if I'm Taylor Bryan Price, I'm not terribly happy with that. Because oh, I, would, I would not be very happy with that either. That was, that was I, I would say that's pretty uncalled for right there. Yeah, especially that it didn't look like they were near each other unless something happened really early on the race. So watch for that. Maybe on this restart, the 09 holds up that lane because of the damage. Meanwhile, at the front, Levi Schultz 22 currently leads at the Texas Motor Speedway in the Nationwide 300. Back here at the Texas Motor Speedway cleaning up our first, first accident of the day. Eli Bright, our in-race reporter, narrowly missed that one. He's currently in 18th. Trey, let's go talk to him. All right, Eli Bright, this is Trey and Joe up in the booth. You got a copy? Yes, sir. Man, that wreck looked like it happened right in front of you there. It was, uh, you know, pretty unexpected there. Uh, you managed to just barely skate by there. What do you happen to see? I just seen four wide, someone getting turned, and I just tried to gas it up and hopefully miss the one car coming back up the track. Yeah, it looks like you did a very good job there. It the, uh, looks like you just followed the 16 there, and it looked, that worked uh, pretty well. Uh, so, uh, you know, you're 18th here, coming back on the restart. Uh, what's your uh, what's your plan for the rest of the race? Hopefully just get to the inside and stay there, or just at, sh at least shuffle back and try to get back to the front. All right. Um, what else? Uh, you have any uh, strategy here other than get to the inside, maybe uh, work with some someone else out here on the racetrack, or are you just all by yourself? I would like to find a five car, but that probably won't happen, but we'll f our friends are where we find them. <laughs> all right, that sounds all good there. Uh, well, I believe that's all the questions I have. Uh, good luck here with the rest of the race. All right, will do. That was Eli Bright and race reporters. They've just been given the one to go signal from the officials, so we're going back green this time by in the Nationwide 300 at the Texas Motor Speedway. Levi Shones looking to go two in a row here in the Target Series. One last race at Phoenix, looking to do the same here at Texas. Out from that crash, Jay Jefferson, that vicious impact. Uh, definitely could not repair that one car. And Evan Hunter, the car he collected as he came back up the racetrack, also out. It will leave us 40 cars left running. And how about maybe some lap cars, Trey, uh, to maybe deal with during this race? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh this was an early wreck in the race, so I definitely expect lap cars here to possibly play a, uh, a factor here with around 10 to go, give or take there. So, you know, that definitely could be a deciding factor on who gets the win here today. 
So the front five for the restart, Levi Shones, Anthony Nez, Bronson Minnick, Roman Fenway, and Brett Sierra moves up to fifth. They have Fitzwater, Justin Zidell, Taylor Bryan Price, Jake Galloway, and Riley Sprue to the front ten. We'll see how the 9 goes on this restart with that damage to the rear end and to the right side. We're back green here at Texas. Shones gets the jump. Hernandez doesn't go. Minnick goes. In fourth place, Roman Fenway doesn't get a good restart. Back here, looks like the 9 is a little bit slower on the takeoff. We'll see if he can get going up to speed, though, with that draft. Yeah, that damage definitely does not help him there on the restart as the people behind him are going to try to find a way around him really quickly here. And it looks like Bronson Minnick actually did not wait at all to get past the uh, 21 there as well. Uh, Anthony Hernandez maybe didn't get the best start he wanted and then uh, it looks like Roman Fenway is going to take advantage of that as well. Roman Fenway as well didn't really get going on that restart, but he got a great draft as they were side by side in front, punching a big hole in the air, and Fenway got a run down the backstretch and made the move through three and four to get by to third. For the lead, Shones whipped the track. Minnick to his core panel, maybe gets him a little loose right there. Pushes the 22 up, and Minnick goes side by side with Shones down the backstretch for the top spot here at Texas. The preferred lane through three and four is the inside. Minnick will use it to his advantage and lead coming off turn four. Come around 20 to go this time by at Texas. Minnick's going to get the run here off the bottom, it looks like. And it looks like Roman Fenway is going to try to do his best to follow him as he does get to the inside of the 22 there, followed by, was that the, looks like the 30 of Zydell is going to follow him as well. Almost look to the inside there. Possibly goes going to try to make a three wide for the lead. Zydell gave that 89 Fenway a big boost forward to get to the inside of Bronson Mick. Now he wants to look even lower, maybe about half a lane lower, pushing the end up the racetrack, maybe gave him a bumper right there. Zydell inside of Fenway. Fenway will lead the lap. Zydell, though, is the preferred lane to turn one. He has friends down low with them, like Fitzwater and Tall. Hernandez will get down line. They'll look three wide for the lead. Minnick could try and shoot the middle there, shoot the gap in the middle. As Fenway went wide through turns one and two, Fitzwater way down low is going to take two spots for one right there. He was fifth at the stripe last time. He's going to be second this time by. Looks like he was getting a very big push there by Tall down the back stretch. It was actually going to allow him to get to the inside of Zydell there. And, uh, yeah, a little bit of... I wouldn't say teamwork. I'm not. I don't remember if they're on the same team, but uh, teamwork in the gist of things, allowing both of those cars to battle for the lead. Yeah, those drivers definitely work together. Fitzwater and Tall on the inside. Now the 47 will move the 59 aside. Look to the inside for the top spot. Back behind them a little bit. Three wide. Jake Gowie middle of it. Eric Olsen to the bottom of the 25. Taylor Bryan Price was kind of holding pace for a little bit right there, but getting out of the draft really hurt the 09. Up top, falling back now. A few spots outside the top 10. There'll be three wide for a second on corner exit. A little tight right there for Hernandez, Minnick, and Fitzwater. A little close and physical. Three wide for a second position. Mazatola likes to see that, trying to pull away with the race lead. Seven 17 to go here in Texas and up the track for the 47. Hernandez bond with Roman Fenway, Eric Olson, and Keyshawn Richardson coming for. Remember, the 11 car, Keyshawn Richardson, start back in the 41st position up inside the top 10, not even halfway through. Yeah, he, he was able to miss that wreck there early in the race there, and that allowed him to get a little farther up the pack, and he's definitely going to make everything he can of it, try to get the best finish he can, possibly even uh, later in the race here as we are just about we'll be halfway next time by here so he's definitely in a position he wants to be to be up here towards the end 21 falls the 47 with the racetrack maybe some dirty air there a great run on corner exit for Bronson make the 42 but can't go anywhere with it he's in a box right now wall to his outside to his inside some cars and in front of him behind him we have cars but up front Tall's pulling away. Keyshawn Richardson's looking three wide. Has help from Jake Gowie behind. They're getting a little close on corner exit right there. Almost contact made. How about John Smith? Narrowly missed that big crash. He's up inside the top ten on the inside. Up inside the top five now. Halfway through. He has a shot to win this thing. And here comes Levi Shones. Led the restart. Coming back on the inside. Trying to get back up to the top spot. They'll be four wide. And Minnick oh, and Fitzwater hit. Really close there. Holy cow. What a save out of those drivers. That's great driving right there. That could have been a big crash. They were up inside the top 10 when that contact occurred, but they saved it, kept it going straight. All these cars that are left in this pack are still running. Great job by Minnick and Fitzwater there to control their cars. Yeah, it looked like a pretty big hit there between those two. Not sure if uh, Fitzwater has any damage on his right rear quarter panel there or uh, Bronson Minnick with the left front fender there. That, was, uh, that could have been really bad there, especially that was up in front of the pack. And as we were talking about all that, Keyshawn Richardson most of his way by Madison Tall to get to the top spot. Jake Galloway looking to get through in second. John Smith as well. There'll be three wide back here. Eric Olsen pounds the wall in corner exit, drops back on the outside and pushing the outside back. But now we've caught Luke Rainey, the 88, and look at the mess he's caused at the front of the field. On the inside lane, the preferred lane, everyone on the outside gets going now. So how about that? 25 slowed the outside, but it's going to work out for them in the end. They get around and back there. Oh my oh gosh. Oh my goodness. That was almost 
almost a big wreck there. Looked like they almost could have collected Eli Bright there, that entire inside lane there on the back stretch. And I believe that was once again a car almost turned off the front end of the 05. I believe the 05 almost turned the 20. Look at Luke Rainey, a roadblock for the inside lane. I mean, I they they tell lap cars hold your lane, but not when it's the preferred lane. You kind of want to get out of the way. So Zydell's gonna try and route the 88 up the racetrack and does do that. But look at the ground they've lost, the time they've lost. The these drivers back here, they're gonna need yellow flag to get caught back up. So look at the positions they've lost all the time. These drivers up here in this draft, they're gonna pull away. So unless more lap cars happen or unless we get yet an accident, I believe those drivers' chances are done. Yeah, I would say I don't think there's enough time for those drivers in the back here to catch back up to this lead pack. It looks like at the moment about a 10 or so car race here for the win, possibly, unless that little miniature group there behind the lead pack is able to catch up. But at the moment, it looks like uh, about, like I said, about 10 cars or so for the win. Yeah, you see back here, Levi Schoen, some others that got away, Fitzwater, John Smith, Spurly Tube, Wells. It will be about 12 cars, so about a dozen cars to sell it. Then, as we mentioned, this mini pack back here, they're going about the same pace as the race leaders. They're just, I, I, I would say if they're maybe a tenth or two closer, they would maybe in, be in drafting range. But since they aren't, they're all just running similar laps to that front pack. Minix, Sierra, Colin Teague, Alex Turner, and Casey Nacco. And then this mega pack back here, these drivers that got held up big time, they're trying to move forward and... I hope a yellow flag comes next. See some three wide right here. Mason Baskers, Tommy Fletcher Jr., Eli Bright, Landon Dinkins, Jeff Bright back here, Colton Yo, Trey Rainey, DJ Reed, Landon Lyons, and there's the damaged car, the 30 of Adam McDowell. Still actually going pretty well at this pace, even with that terrible left side damage, but he's keeping that car going in the main pack on the lead lap. Jose Mills just behind the 40, and then there's Luke Rainey, the lap car, and Alex Fletcher. So it looks like those are really the only cars to worry about, the 88 of Luke Rainey. Yeah, I would say that as well. As you can see, Madison Tall here going for the lead under Keyshawn Richardson, followed by, here he is again, Levi Shones trying to be the first two-time winner here this season. Uh, he's definitely going to do whatever he can. It looks like he might even give the 47 a little push here through the corner. As it was, Looks like Fitzwater got a little tight there in the corner, had to back out a little bit. And that's going to give Keyshawn Richardson the clearance to then make a crossover move if he wants to into turn number three. He has a run to the back of Shones. Levi's trying to protect it and trying to get underneath Tall at the same time. That's a little close off the corner. Luckily there, the 22 didn't spin the 47 out with how close they were. It looks like Shones kind of backs out of it, gives the 47 some breathing room. As far as Keyshawn didn't try to make a move, but he might try and push this 22 by the 47 and maybe make a three-wide move. Look at him. He's going to push the 22 aside. Keyshawn is go has no, uh, definitely not trying to make friends out there, being very aggressive here, but it's what you got to do as we're coming to six laps to go this time by. You got to do whatever you got to do to get yourself in the best position you possibly can. Back behind them, three wide. John Smith getting close with DeLello. DeLello, as we mentioned, Keyshawn Richardson started 41st. DeLello started 42nd. They're both up inside the top 10 with a shot to win it if it all goes their way. Madison Tall still leads, though. These two definitely been, I think, the dominant cars. Tall and Keyshawn Richardson, I think they probably led the most laps combined here today, and they're showing it. They're right now side by side for the top spot. Levi Schoen's lurking as well. These are maybe the three best cars of the day, and they're right now the three battling for the race win. I would definitely say these three cars are the big three of today's race. You know, they just showed they had really powerful cars, able to stay up front, able to get the lead, able to grow on that lead a little bit, but not to the point to where no one is able to catch back up. Uh, here comes the nine of Riley Spurley as well, trying to challenge these three. Maybe he'll have, maybe he has the better long run car here. Yeah, Spurley to trying to make something happen there. He got a great draft up on those front three as they were side by side and almost looking three wide. Back here for sixth position, they are three wide. DeLello inside of Fenway and John Smith grabbing those spots. Smith goes up the race track. Behind them, some drivers trying to get in, like Bronson Minnick and Mathis Wells, Jake Galloway, Hernandez, and Eric Olsen. So I believe Minnick is actually adding himself to this pack from that secondary pack because now we have 13 cars in this main draft. But with four laps to go, I believe you have to be inside the top 10, maybe even inside the top five at this point to have a shot to win. There's just not enough time to make your way up through from 13th position. Yeah, I would definitely say top five would probably be the best bet. Maybe even sixth place and seventh place there might have a chance if they can hurry up and get a good draft on this front pack. But uh, the big three of this race is definitely still out front, and uh, looks like they have the best cars here to try to pull out the victory. 
Levi Shones looking for back-to-back. -back. Mass and Tall looking for first ever target series victory. Keyshawn Richardson wants another win. As Shones goes up the track, they're going to be three wide on corner exit. Keyshawn forced the 47 into the middle lane. Can Tall clear the 11 so then get down to the preferred lane in turn three? She can't. There'll be three wide for the lead. Come around to two to go. Three miles left this time by. Who's it going to be? Can Fitzwater spray to for someone else? Close in as well. Shones has to lift off the gas. Now Keyshawn Richardson to the front spot. Two to go in Texas. That three wide move allowed Fitzwater and even Delello to catch back up here. And Fitzwater's right there going on the bottom for second place, even possibly going to be side by side for first place here coming off of turns two. He's right in this thing to get this win here as they're going to come around a three and four to the white flag. They call Fitzwater the king of NR. Many titles, many wins but he has never won in the Target Series. Can he change that here today? He's got to get by Keyshawn Richardson, hold off Riley Sproe to, there's the white flag. One and a half miles to go, will be Keyshawn Richardson, Zach Fitzwater Sr. or someone else in the turn one. Sproe Tube and DeLello are there lurking, looking through one and two. Sproe Tube looking inside of Fitzwater, the 59 slides up. The yellow flag is up, we're racing it back around. Three wide for the race lead. Keyshawn outside, Fitzwater middle, inside Riley Sproe Tube to turn three, back behind them. Can someone else do something? There'll be three wide off the fourth corner. Keyshawn's good back out. Be a battle between Sprout and Fitzwater. Beating it, banging to the start finish line. And on the inside, Sprout the push from Minnick wins the race. He Riley Sproutle to oh. beats Fitzwater in a drag race to the line. They had wrecked off of turn number four at some point on that coming to the white flag. But luckily, our race leaders got to the start finish line. And Riley Sprout does it over Zach Fitzwater Sr. Let's go and look at that official margin of victory. It was by two hundredths of a second. And I think Sproley can really thank Minnick there because that 4-2 gave the 9 a great boost to get by. Oh, uh, yeah, that is very true there. The the 9, you know, like we said, he was, what, second or third on the inside line coming to the white. He was able to get that run into 1 and 2 thanks to the 42. Pushed him to the bottom of the 59 there. They were three wide all the way from the beginning of the backstretch coming off of turn 4. The 42 there, you, you can see Locks goes right up to the rear, that nine of Riley Spurley pushing him, pushing him, and then just enough to get past the 59 there. Last second pass for the lead on the last lap. You couldn't ask for anything better than that. Yeah, Riley Spurley gets it done, but obviously we had something else happen further back in the pack after our race leaders took the white flag. As we'll look and see here when the pace car lights come on, what possibly happened. There's the pace car lights. Something happened here in the quad oval. Eli Bright spun around the eight car. Oh, oh look at this. Like he got turned. Landon Lyons into the side of the eight. I, I wonder I if Eli had to lift there. It looked like either Eli had to lift oh. there. Oh, he got clobbered by the 23 there. That was the, what, the 23 of... Uh, Max Anderson, yeah, came back up the track. Max Anderson looks like didn't have enough time to react there. I can't tell if Eli checked up or if the 92 got maybe tight off the corner there or maybe a little bit of both. Well, we do have an onboard camera with Eli Bright, so we can see if possibly he had to lift out of the throttle at all, maybe land in lines. Obviously, it's late in the race. You're not going to think about lifting. So we'll go on board with Eli and just listen to the throttle and hear if maybe he had to lift out of the gas at all. Yeah, you heard him right there. He had to burp it just a little bit. I think that's what caused it. Oh, that's hard a impact. big hit. Looks like he, Max Anderson couldn't see from all the smoke of the spinning car. Not much either of them could have done there except, you know, Max Anderson was just racing for his position and Eli Bright was really just holding on there. And a tough end for Max Anderson and Eli Bright, but triumph for Riley Sprout to get back to the line over Zach Fitzwater Sr. A photo finish and Sprout to gets it down with the help from Bronson Minnick. Let's go see the finished results and the update point standings. Here is how they finished in the Nationwide 300 at the Texas Motor Speedway. Two caution flags today, four laps. Obviously, the one caution flag happened at the white flag lap. And 12 lead changes, eight drivers saw the lead today in Texas. Definitely a very competitive race. And out front at the end, he only had to lead one lap. Riley Spurley to wins the race over Zachary Fitzroy Sr. A battle to the start-finish line for those two. Bronson Minnick in third, Keyshawn Richardson tied for most laps in fourth. And Madison Tall rounds at the top five. 
Zachary Delello from 42nd, he'll get 6th. Roman Fenway 7th, Levi Schoens all sled 9 laps en route to 8th. John Smith 9th, and Mathis Wells the 16th rounds out the top 10. So obviously the big three that Trey mentioned during the race, Keyshawn, Tall, and Levi Schoens, they combined to lead 25 of the 30 laps here today. So definitely they were the three best cars, but none of them finished inside the top three. Just shows how unpredictable these races become late in the race. Down here you can see Hernandez, Gregory, Olsen, Galloway, Nanico, Beeford, Brian Price, even after being spun, does get 17th, so decent recovery for him. Zydell, Sierra, and Teague rounding out the top 20. They have Code Red, Dupain, Baskers, Turner, Fletcher Jr., Dinkins, Kukulon, Jake Richardson, Colton Yo, Lyons, Reed, Trey Brainy. There's Jeff Bright, Mills, Adam McDowell from Pole, Fletcher and Danny Lloyd finished on the lead lap. Eli Bright, Max Anderson, obviously one lap down. Luke Brainy, three laps down the 88. And now the race, Evan Hunter and Jay Jefferson. Let's now go see the point standings for races into it. Levi Shones is still your points leader here. First driver to do so this season, followed by the 42 of Bronson Middick, the 24 is Zachary Delello, 47 Madison Toll, and the top five in points is uh, topped out by the 25 of Eric Olson. Six is Zachary Fitzwater, seven is uh, the 33 is Z Sebastian Dupain, 55 Colton Yo, 05 of Alex Turner, 16 of Mathis Wells round out the top 10 in points. 17 of Jake Richardson is 11th. 12th is Eli Bright in the 8th. 88 of Luke Rainey is 13th. 20 of Jake Galloway follows him, followed by the 29 of Code Red. The 9 of Riley Spurley, their uh, winner here at Texas. The 1 of Jay Jefferson falls down the 17th. 04 John Smith in 18th. The 77 of Tommy Fletcher Jr. And then rounding out the top 20 in points is the 14 of Casey Nanico. See. Three of our winners are up inside the top 20 in points. And obviously wins mean a lot with this format, especially say if you're Riley Sperly Tube, you're right now 16th in points. You're in a wild card spot currently, along with the 17th of Jake Richardson. Two winners, Sebastian Dupain and 7th Levi Shones in first. Obviously up there, Shones has three top 10s to start the season, the most of anyone so far. You look down here and you see drivers like Baskers. There's DJ Reed, his win. But he's down 22nd in points, so he's not in wildcard contention. You need to be top 20 to use that win as a wildcard chance. Other drivers down here, Brett Sierra, last season's champion, not pairing so well. Keyshawn Richardson ran well here today, he moves up to 32nd in the points. Max Harris involved in that crash with Eli Bright, down to 27th. Trey Rainey making his final ever target series season starts, down 38th. Jeff Bright, two-time target series champion, down in 40th. And even lower, Danny Lloyd has been so well in the Target Series. He's down 41st. Now McDowell, another two-time Target Series champion, down in 42nd. So a bad start to the season for those drivers. But maybe for Jeff Bright, there is some luck around the corner for him. Race number five, the race he won last season. We head to the Charlotte Roval for the Bojangles 175. I will see you guys then.